Alright guys, welcome to chapter 4, Building the Game World. So this is the chapter where our game starts to take a little bit of shape. Um, but before we get into that... Uh, actually, I think your tiled, actually, tiled map was our due last week. Um, so if you haven't got your sprite done yet, make sure you get your sprite in this week. I think when I originally designed the class, they were both due this week, but never mind. So, level design. So normally at this point uh, of the game design process, uh, you have a complete game design document. You know what the game needs. You know what monsters are going to go in, what loot's going to go in, um, what the locations are going to be, what the assets are going to kind of look like. Um, you've got some you know, basic artwork. Uh, you have an end goal for the game. You know if it's going to have day or nighttime features. And once you have the game all planned out, then you start designing the levels. Now, in our case, we're just going to jump in and design a level because it's the fastest way, or actually the best way, uh, to show you how to do these things in Unity. So, because we're not actually designing um, the levels, uh, per se, uh, there are some assumptions that we get to make, and our, our goal is to get the character you know, from the start of the game to the castle at the end of the level. So that's our goal. Um, and the theory is this will be the first level of a game, it's going to be relatively easy to complete, and the player has played this type of game before. Most games typically start out with an easier level, um, and they kind of use like a tutorial thing where um, they show you how to move, how to jump, how to you know access your resources, things like that. So for this game, the first level is very easy, nothing too complicated, um, just to show the player you know the different mechanics that he can jump, uh, that water obviously would kill him, uh, that he can bump up against certain blocks and get a coin, that kind of stuff. Alright, so at this point, we're not concerned with polish. We just want a basic system for guiding the player through uh, the game. And then later on, we put in the details. In early prototyping for levels, uh, they'll actually, instead of having the actual art assets, uh, they'll just have blocks and squares and cubes, uh, and they'll actually do the game with that to make sure that it's fun. Uh, and then as long as it's fun, then they put in the other stuff. Now, your first level should always um, show the user how to do things, where he can walk, where he can't walk, how he can go up, how he can go down, how he can open his inventory, uh, different things like that. And you can build these things in without actually having a tutorial. Um, there was a game where you actually you like w went down a waterfall and that showed you how to go down how, how to go downwards. Uh, and then walking on a dirt path, hey, I can only walk on this place, and then if I try to deviate from that path, you know, I get blocked. So there are a lot of ways to teach people how to use your game without actually making it a tutorial where they, they think they're learning, if that makes sense. Uh, it's more about having fun and learning as you go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Unity, and you're going to create a just a test project. Uh, and when we get done with this, we're going to delete it, and we're all going to use this thing for like 10 minutes. Um, so just click on File. So or, I'm sorry, once you click on it, then we'll create a file, new scene, and we're going to go from there. So for this one, when you go in and you name it, make, just make sure you uh, leave it as a 3D project. So make sure you click on 3D so that 3D is highlighted. And then hit Create Project, and then Wait. Ta-da! Almost. All right, so there we go. All right, so our Unity is open. We're going to hit File, New Scene, just to make sure we're new. And if for some reason you're not seeing the inspector tool, I'm sorry, or the uh, the gizmo thing, and I always forget what this thing is called. If for some reason you don't see that, click over here on 2D, and that'll make that go away because then it's 2D. So if your screen looks like this, you want to click on that to make it 3D, and then the gizmo thing pops back up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a game object. Uh, so we're going to just make a cube. So you're going to go to game object, and then you're going to create a 3D object, and cube. And then, hooray, we got a 3D cube in here. Now, with the cube dropped in there, um, it automatically, when you first create an object, uh, it goes to the directional arrows. And then I can use these arrows to actually move the item in all three of the axes. Alright, so up here, this thing, this technical name, this is the Scene Gizmo. And then down here, these, this is the Translate tools that allow me to um, translate the position to something different. So the Scene Gizmo here doesn't allow me to move the screen. Like, I can't move this um, or move the screen by manipulating that. Um, I can, though, move the mouse around. So I'm, I'm holding the right mouse button down and I'm moving, you know, right and le or left and right. Uh, and then I can see how the uh, gizmo kind of thing kind of moves around to show me my relative position. 
All right, in my translate tool, the three arrows, um, red is the x value. So anytime you move this, you'll see that the x value here in the transform moves. And then blue is the z or the z value. And then green, or they, they say yellow, depends on the book you look at. Now there is yellow. Ah, go back. So transform uh, allows us to translate our position or to transform our position from one place to another. So keep that in mind for next week. All right, now let's check out the transition tools up here. So if I grab the block, or I put the little hand thing on here, you know, I can kind of move the entire scene by clicking and dragging. If I grab the directional, then I get the, um, the translate tool, and then I can translate the positions. If I grab this, now I can actually rotate on all the different axes. So let me get up a little closer here. Yeah. So I can grab the red, rotate, blue, rotate, and, and do whatever, however I need to position that. So go ahead and move that around a bit. And you can see my positions are changing here on the rotation uh, section of the transform window. So as I move different directions, my rotation numbers change. Now, if for some reason you're like, oh, I can't get it right back to perfect how I had it, or something like that, just go to rotation and just pop in a bunch of zeros and that'll fix it as well. So next week when we start getting into some scripting, when we script we actually plug these values in here uh, to manipulate different objects. So that's why this transform little portion here um, under the inspector uh, is going to be so important to us. Alright, something else, if you look here in the, the scene gizmo it says perspective, uh, and it's saying, hey, this is, this is where this perspective is. It's, uh, you get different angles on the three axes because it's all based on the user's perspective. But if I click on this, now all of a sudden I get an isometric view, which means I'm, I'm seeing the scene from the exact same distance from all three angles. We typically don't do things in isometric view, we just go to perspective, and that way we can kind of like see what the user sees or where the user is located in our scene. Um, but just be aware that you can do that, and if for some reason that ever happens, you're like, oh crap, now I'm all funked up, uh, just click on that again, and you go from perspective, isometric, perspective. Alright, once I'm in my scene, just click on the ground here somewhere. You can move around your scene by using the arrow keys. Whew. You can also hold the right mouse button, and then you can do the WASD -A keys. So the, the normal buttons don't work, but if you hold the right mouse button down, then they work. You can also hold down the center mouse wheel and then move the mouse around, and that'll work too. Again, like I always, I've said before, you can hold the right mouse button down and then just move the mouse, and that kind of moves it real kind of funky. Or you can always grab the hand tool, and then it'll move it from wherever you position the hand tool. So lots of ways to move around here in your scene. So keep those in mind. Now, the last part of the transform window is the scale. If I wanted to change the size of my block, I could go here, and make it as big or as small uh, as I wanted it to be. As long as all three sizes match in the scale, it's going to be this, it's going to be a square. But if I start changing one of the sides, whoa! Now I got all kinds of weird stuff going on. And then if you ever need to fix that stuff, ah, just change them all back to one, and you're good. So make sure you understand uh, the, those three different values in the transform window. Now, let's say you do something uh, and you make a mistake and you have no idea how to fix it. Like, um, I'm just going to, oh, crap, I did this and I don't know how to go to the scale window and fix that. You can always hit Control Z, and Control Z will undo your last uh, whatever keystroke or whatever you typed in last.
Um, and you can also do that several times. So if I, well, I'm going to resize this to two. Then I'm going to resize this to two. Then I'm going to hit Control Z and Control Z. And it takes me right back both steps. So it'll Control Z and memorize. I don't know if it's the last five or the last ten. Um, but basically, once you do something wrong, always use Control Z to get you back. All right, now next week, uh, we're going to step away from the book for a little bit, uh, and we're going to talk about making this square actually move uh, and building a, a, a controller through coding um, that'll make this move with the ASW or the, the WASD keys. And then once we have that down next week, then the week after that, we'll jump into Chapter 5, uh, and we'll start building our script for the player movement in our game. But I'm getting ahead of myself, um, so now you can go ahead and close this project. Uh, and just delete it, however you want to handle it. So I'm just going to do File, Exit. No, I don't want to save. All right, and then you want to open up your game file. Well, you don't have to open up your game file. But um, it would be nice if you could make a copy of your game file. Like if I go to mine, I have a save. So at the end of Chapter 1, I saved the game, and then I, I made a copy of that. So if I were to go to my PC and go to Unity... It's just under projects. So wherever you installed Unity, go to that Unity folder, and then there's your projects. So there's all your stuff. So I can get rid of Trash Me 2. Bye bye. And then at this point of the, let's say um, this was my 2D platform game, and I just finished Chapter 3. I could right click, copy, and then I could go to my 2D game saves, and I could go, ah, I'm gonna get out of there and paste. and then wait for it and then I can just rename it chapter 10 complete and that way if for some reason you get into chapter 5 and you start screwing up and you you do something terribly wrong and you want to go back from the start you can just go back and reload um, this without screwing up your game. And that way, again, if you make a mistake later on, you can kind of fix it. So I'm going to go to Chapter 3 Completed and open that one up. Uh, but you can do it however you want to. So if you want to make a copy of your game currently um, and then and just work on the copy, that would be great. If you want to work on your actual game, that's fine. Typically in the real world, <laughs> you want to work on a copy, and then if everything goes well, then you want to save the copy as the, you know, hey, here's where I'm at now, that kind of stuff. You want to have several different um, uh, instances of your game. And the reason for that is you never know when something's going to happen, whether the, the main file is going to get corrupted, um, somebody's going to lose my backup, my PC's going to die, um, I'm going to make a critical mistake and not be able to go back. So in the real world, you know, we typically we have a bunch of backup tapes. We have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that way, if something happens on Friday, where we realize that it on Friday, and but it happened on Wednesday, we can go back to the Tuesday backup tape. So kind of the same thing here. So always make sure you have backups of your project files. All right, so when you open up the, at the end of Chapter 3, this is where you should have been. But if I need to hit File, Open Scene, and grab my test level. And that's where we left off. All right, and I still have no idea what this um, box item alt thing is. Uh, my guess is that this somewhere that this guy was supposed to tell us uh, to rename this to ground check because if I look at page 66, it shows our player there, and behind him, like underneath where it says player in green, in red behind the word player, you can see it says ground check. But I couldn't find anywhere in there where it, he told us to rename that ground check and do some stuff with it. So that's my guess. Um, as we go on, we'll probably just get rid of that thing. But for now, we can just move it um, uh, away and just do that. All right, so clicking on our player, um, he should be at position 0, 0, 0. Now, each week when you get to this point, you always want to import that chapter's asset package. So we're going to go to Assets, right-click, Import Package, Custom, and then you're gonna go find where you save that sucker at. Um, Unity 2D asset files. And chapter, well actually we're on chapter four now. So I wanna grab chapter four start. And we're gonna get a whole bunch of prefabs. Woohoo! Look at that. So just leave them all checked and hit import.
Now, again, I want to point out if I go to sprites, all right, is it sprites or oh, it's under prefab. So I got another player prefab, which eh, we'll talk, we'll deal with that later. So what I want you to do is to go to uh, prefab, and we're looking for grass mid. So here in the search box, you can go through here and find it, or just type in grass mid, and there it is. So you want to grab this, and you want to put it in your scene, and we're going to change that to position 0, 0, 0. So now I'm going to move my player off of that, and we'll just put him right kind of like there, hovering above it. So I got my first piece of the map, and my player's above it, and I'm all set. So now we need to build more of the map. So now I want you to grab grass center, so here, grass center, and you want the square one, not the one with the rounded edges. So we're going to grab that and put it here, uh, as close as we can get. Now I'm going to move the camera for a second, main camera, ah, move, and I'm going to move it by putting a minus two in its transform and move it over here left. But you can see here when we put our blocks together, we can put them together, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're connected. If you don't connect things properly, you'll get um, weird tearing on the screen and some other stuff. So what you want to do is you want to hit Edit, and then Snap Settings down here at the bottom. And that should bring up a little window. Ah, where'd my little window go? Dang it. Hold on a sec. Sorry, my little window popped up on the other screen. So it should be a little window like this. So make sure that it says, you know, 1, 1, and 1 um, as the, the location. And then hit Snap All Axes. And you see this kind of moved a little bit. That actually snaps you to that spot and kind of like puts those pieces together. Now, don't close that little box yet. We're going to kind of keep that open over here on the left. And if I look over here, it should say 0, minus 1, and 0 in my transform position. All right, so now um, I want to copy that. So I want to grab both blocks. So I'm going to click on the top block, I'm going to hold control, and then I'm going to click on the bottom block. So now I have both blocks selected. With both blocks selected, I want to hit control and then the letter D as in David. So control D. And you see up here, all of a sudden I had grass mid and grass center. Now I have grass mid one and grass center. So if I grab those and move it, you see I made a duplicate. So Control D allows me to duplicate something in the game. So now I'm going to drag that close, and then I'm going to hit Snap Axes. Bloop! And you see like it pops it right in there. Um, hopefully I won't get any screen tears because of this, uh, and everything's all nice and neat. All right, so hopefully that worked for you. Your stuff all looks all nice like that. Now, I need you to make eight more of these sections. So you can either do this and duplicate that eight more times, or I can grab all four of those, and then I can control D, and then I can move that over. Ah, I must have missed that section. Dang it. All right, I'm going to control Z, take that back, and all right, now I got all four highlighted. Make sure all four are one, two, three, four. Now, if those are all highlighted, now I can hit Control D, and now I get my four more, and then snap to axes, and now I can say, hey, I want to grab that, 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 that. And then I want to do a Control D, and move that block over, get it close, and snap that sucker. Now I only need space for two more. So now I'm going to just grab that, 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 that. And again, I'm holding the control key down when I select these. And I'm looking over here to make sure that I have all four blocks selected. And then I do control D. And then I move it over. And then I snap to axes. So I see somewhere I screwed up. And if I look, I have grass mid three here. And if I move that off, then there's grass mid. And that's why I have a total of 11 mid grass, but I only have 10 center grass. So obviously that's an issue, so I need to right click. I can just go right click there and delete. And you can rename these if you want to. Like I can go back in here and make that, you know, grass mid something else, or whatever number that I miss and renumber those all, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, just as long as I've got my 10, I'm good.
So just make sure you only have 10 um, up here. So they should start 0 and 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So then you're saying, hey, wait a minute, you must have some other mistakes. Well, I sure did. So apparently what I just did there wasn't really the best way. You should have just did it 2 and 2 and 2. And honestly, that's what I probably should do. So I'm just going to grab all of these. Uh, would have been a lot easier just to highlight this whole section and just delete. Then I'm going to go back and delete those two. Alright, you can see I still I have center grass too and center grass. Um, so I need to kill that. Alright, so now <laughs> that I'm back at the beginning, you just want to do two at a time. Unless that worked out for you. Alright, and snap. And I'm, I'm always going to go to my, um, you always want to go to the originals. Duplicate those, move those over, snap them. Coming back here. Alright, so let me finish this real quick and I'll turn the video off. Alright, so if you did it right, you should only have mid grass and center grass 9. So it should look like that. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because 0 through 9 is 10 blocks. Ray, I passed math class. I know. Do you believe they actually let me teach? It's scary, but I digress. All right, so this, these first 10 blocks, that's going to be scene one, scene one of the first level. So the first level is going to be composed of multiple scenes. So I'm going to uh, grab this and then move my scene over a little bit. Now I need to make scene two over here. So each scene is going to be 10 blocks. So I can either go through that process again, uh, or I can do it the easy way um, and make some copies. So that's what I'm going to do, because I'm all about easy. So I want you to go to the Hierarchy tab here and hit Create and Create Empty. And then you're going to go up here to where that, that game object is in the inspector, and you're going to name that scene um, one. Or actually, I'm sorry, screen one. Alright, so if I go here, so screen one, or take out the dash. So now I've got this new um, child object, or I'm sorry, a new game object. I can drag all of my scene one into that object. So I'm going to start with mid grass, and then I'm going to hold a shift, and I'm going to click on Midgrass 9 to highlight all of these, and I'm going to drop them all into Scene 1. And now if I close that, see how nice and neat everything is? And whatever changes I make here to the parent object, they will propagate down to the child objects. Ray! So now with Scene 1 highlighted, you're going to right-click and duplicate. And then you're going to get uh, screen one one. I, I don't know. I know I keep saying scene. That's not that I can't read. Uh, <laughs> it's a long story. So screen one. And we we just go in here and rename this screen two. All right. Now with screen two highlighted, so make sure it's blue. You're going to change the position to ten, and then zero and zero. Alright, now <laughs> what happened? Let me go to scene one. Oh, scene one got off of foobar two. Let me fix that. So once I put scene one, uh, let me go back and grab the little hand. Um, once I put that on scene one on zero, 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 then I put scene two on ten, zero, zero, and then now they all line up. Alright, now when we click on screen two, we want to hit snap all axes to make sure that it snaps to this guy. And now we're good. All right, with that done, I'm going to move that around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to click off my snap settings. I'm gonna, ah, I need to move these objects. Get rid of that. Ah, I'm going to go back to the rec tool. That'll move that. I'm going to move my player so he can like go to the start. Uh, and then I can move my camera uh, minus eight. And then I'm all set. Alright, so grab the hand, move that around. So now you've got two scenes or two screens already. 
All right, so what we have here is a pretty boring scene. Um, a guy walking down just a flat ground, which is kind of boring. So what we want to do is we want to start dressing our scene up. So go down here to back to prefabs and type in uh, fence. And then grab the, prince, uh, the fence prefab. And I want you to put this on top of the tenth block. So one, where are we at? One, two, three, four, you get the idea. So let me unfunk this. All right, scene one. Zero, 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 and scene two's on 10, which is what it's supposed to be. All right, so that's that should be the 10th block. So now I can grab fence and put it, uh, oh, I did not want to do that, because of control Z if you stretch it out. We just want to move that sucker. So fence, move, he needs to go there. Uh, and then if you got rid of your little window, uh, edit, snap settings, and snap that. Ah, what are you doing to me? I want to let me fix this. All right, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab my block and put it back in 0, 0, 0. So that's the very first block. So I'm, then I'm going to highlight everything that's left out of scene 1. Ah, let, me get, let me move the scene 2 stuff out of the way. I know I keep saying scene, and I mean screen. So let me move that out. Then I want to click there. Ah, oh, grab the. Ooh, why do I do that? All right, he's got to be in zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero. So he, now he's all good. All right, so now when I grab seed one, I don't want to grab mid center. I want to grab it like that. Edit, snap settings, snap. Sweet! Alright, now I want to move my fence. He's going to be on the top of the 10th block. Snap him in. Grab that little guy. Move me on over. Grab scene 2. Move... Ah! Freaking wrong tool. Don't be like me, guys. Snap. Poof. Alright. Now I'm done. That's where I should be. So I should have 20 blocks going across. Uh, they should be lined up so I'm in one of these squares, and that way you can kind of position everything. Uh, and then my fence is on uh, the tenth block. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, when I do this in practice, everything all just worked out great. And then as soon as I start recording, <laughs> it gets all foobar. That's my Irish luck. All right, so that's where I'm at. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to grab my close these things so my screen looks a little better. I'm going to go grab my player and move him back. Player, where you at? Ah, player. Rec tool. Oh, don't be like me, guys. Camera. Let's move him up a little bit. And then let's move his position to minus two. Now, later on, we're going to attach the camera to the player. So I just keep the camera off to the left side right now as I'm doing the level stuff. So don't worry too much about the camera. And I'm going to move this. All right, so that's where, that's where we should be at right now. Um, our player, somewhere near the start, and then we should have 20 blocks, and then our fence. Now, I need three more pieces of fence. So I'm going to click on the fence, control D, and I'm going to drag it. Add it, snap settings, snap that sucker. Grab my first fence, control D, drag it, snap it. Fence, control D, drag it, and snap. So now I got my four fence sections. Woohoo! Now, we want to keep these organized so that each object is in its proper folder. And that way, like I know every 10 blocks is this scene, and then this is this screen. So in our first screen, this first fence is actually part of the first 10. So I'm going to grab him and put him into screen 1. And then I'm going to grab these other three, and I'm going to put those into screen 2. And now when we make changes to each screen, um, it's a lot easier because I can do universal changes to the parent object, uh, and they'll propagate down to the child objects. All right, now we're going to make some changes. We're going to take these last two blocks, and we're going to pick them. So remember, if I click on the one, hold control, hit another one, now I've selected both of those. So then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to right-click and delete. Bloop. 
<gasps> so now those are gone. But now I want to put in two different blocks. So make sure you click on prefabs and then go here and we're looking for grass cliff right. Grass cliff right. And we want this one. So now I'm going to drag that to my scene, pop it down, snap the axes, and then I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to look for liquid water. L I Q U liquid water. And then I'm going to put him right below that and snap the axes. So at this point, that doesn't look very good. And I'm going to move this tool uh, just so I can kind of get a better look at that stuff. So to start playing around with this stuff, now I need to start faking some 3D. Because um, I'm going to start putting some tiles on top of other tiles. And I want my character to be able to walk behind the fence post and things like that. So you're going to go over here to the this little guy. And you're going to click on layers. And then you're going to click on edit layers. So now we're going to add some layers to our game. But we don't want regular layers. We want sorting layers. So here under sorting layers, make sure that you add five layers. You always have to have a default layer. That's the that's the, obviously there has to be at least one layer. Um, and then you're going to add um, five new layers. Ooh, I'm sorry, four layers. Bloop. Um, so we hit the plus sign four times, so we added four layers in addition to the default. So now I want you to give those layers names. So go to the first one right underneath default, and that's going to be the foreground. So foreground. And then we're going to have our characters. Then you're going to have the midground. and then background. Uh, make sure your naming stuff is all like consistent. Now Unity starts drawing these from the bottom up. So it always draws your background first, then it draws the midground over that, then it draws the character level over that, then it draws the foreground character over that. So the foreground is the last one to draw. So anything that's below foreground will be behind any object in the foreground. And this is a little bit different from your book. In your book, um, I think they show the default level at the bottom. But now with Unity 5, the default layer is at the top, and then it starts drawing that way. Now, I could be wrong. It could draw from the front, like from foreground and move backwards. Um, but I, I guess in my mind, it would just be easier to draw from the background up. But either way, just make sure you know that this bottom one is going to be your background, and anything on the top is going to be the foreground. And never mind which one gets drawn first. All right, now my notes say to reposition these, and we're going to grab character and move it up. And then we're going to add the midground and move it up. Then we're going to add background and move it up. And then default and foreground, that does not look right to me. We're going to change that around a bit, and we're going to do foreground default, and then we're going to do character mid and background. Because my understanding, it draws everything from the top down. So it starts in the background. And then it writes the next layer over top of that layer. So that anything in the, f like any character here would be draw written. And then anything in the foreground would then be written over the character. So we'll just leave it like that. Sorry for the confusion. Oh, dealing with all these older books and the older versions of Unity gets very confusing. That and I'm a noob, so <laughs> what can I say? So if we did this right, hopefully it'll work out when we work fix this water thing going on. So now that we changed that, the first thing we want to do, we want to grab our four fence posts. So make sure we got all four. So click, remember, click on the first one, hold control, and then click on the next three. So all four should be selected. And you'll see, you know, one in the other one scene and one and three in the other ones. And make sure you change that layer to foreground. All right, where'd that sucker go? Ooh. Never mind that. We want to go. We just want to go to the. You can do this if you've set up your other layers, and we're not doing that yet. Uh, we made sorting layers, and what we're going to do with the sorting layers is we're going to actually apply it to the prefab, and that way it affects every fence post that we put in. Otherwise, I would have to go here and put new layer, uh, different layers on in the regular layer thing. Like if I hit here and then hit edit layers, 
I could put them here. And then every time I added a fence post, I would have to go and change the layer. And I don't want to do that. That's that's bad game. So if I just go here to fence, now from here, if I go into his sprite renderer and change his sorting layer to foreground, then it changes all of these so they'll all be in the foreground. And any fence that I put down in the future is going to be in the foreground. So now you see the value of having prefabs um, and then using those and, and making the changes to the prefab. So you may ask yourself, well, where did the sprite renderer thing come from? Anytime you do a sprite, a, a 2D sprite or whatever, uh, and you pop it in your game uh, and you create a sprite game object, it automatically sticks the sprite renderer component on there um, so that we can apply these different uh, layers to it. All right, now let's get tricky. Let's go to your prefab folder again. And now we're looking for liquid water top underscore mid. All right, liquid water top underscore mid. Then there's only one. Now we're going to grab that and we're going to drag it and put it right here on top of that. And then we're going to snap it. So we're looking at that and we're like, boy, that looks like dog crap. And I agree with you 100%. So we're going to click on the prefab. And then we're going to go to his sorting layer and turn him into background. And now you can see how the foreground or anything, and anything on a different level is now drawn after that. So all I have to do is just change that from default to background and it fixes that for us. And now that looks much better. So a couple things I want you to remember here. Um, bottom sorting, sorting layers are drawn over the top sorting layers. So we always draw from the top down. Um, so you always want to try to assign these things, the sorting layers, to the prefab. And that way you're not going back and, oh, now I got, you know, if, if I had, let's say I just made the first four levels and each level was 10 screens, that would be 40 screens and then where any time I had a fence post, I would have to go back there and make a change to that game object. That's the last thing you want to do. You want to do things smarter, not harder. All right, now I want to clean this up. I want to grab my water and I'm holding control down. I'm clicking my other water and my cliff and those are all part of screen two. Bloop. And then close that up and all nice and neat. So every 10 blocks is a screen. I now have the first two screens all hand drawn. All right, so let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to grab that, uh, get rid of that, move this over and I'm going to grab my player and I need to be on the rec tool. I <laughs> need to move him there. So anytime you can always hit this, the little arrow here, and you can see, ah, so I need to move the camera, but you can see my sprite is now drawn behind the fence, which is what I want. So if I move that camera, hey camera, to position five, now I'll be able to see it. Bloop. And I can go grab my player, move him over here. So right now everything is working like we want it to. Um, my sprite is drawn in the front, fence is drawn in the front before the sprite, and if I move my guy over here, he falls off and dies. Ah! <laughs> Alright, you get the idea. So that's where you should be right now. You should have your first two screens drawn, um, and then everything should like kind of like fit that way, or fit nice. You know, your your sprite should be behind the fence, uh, your stuff should look nice like that. Uh, you get the idea. So, now you need to create screen 3 on your own. So, here's the, the, the idea from the book. I think it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, then you would do something else for screen 4. So, that's an idea for screen 3 for your other screens, because you're going to give me Woo! Ten screens. So we did the first two together. You're going to come up with the other eight on your own. Um, there's tons of different stuff there in the prefab folder. Uh, there's clouds, there's different items, there's jumping points. Um, think back to, you know, like when you played Super Mario and ask yourself what you can make. So there's little bombs, there's these uh, coin boxes. I have no idea what that is. 
There's boxes that can, I think those break. Uh, you've got some cactus. Hey, let's put a cactus there, Bob. And if you don't like the size of your cactus, you can always change the scale. Uh, went the wrong way with that. Woohoo, big cactus. And if you don't like cactus, you can get him. Just remember, go to the prefab and say, oh, hey, I want him to be in the foreground. And then my character will walk behind it. If I want that to be in the background, I just do background. And if I grab my player, hopefully everything worked here. Yeah, so my player is now drawn in front of it because it's part of the black background. So figure out what you want to do. Make your 10 screens. So remember, I got the first two, so you need uh, you need 80 more blocks down. A uh, bunch of stuff. There's castle pieces. All kinds of weird stuff. There's some coins. Ray! Uh, all kinds of water, sand, fireballs. Put a little fishy in the water. <laughs> I should need to go to bed. It's bad. Uh, there's some flags, jewels, all kind, just boatloads of different stuff. So tons of prefabs there. Uh, the book kind of gives you like a, a very small picture on page 54 at the very bottom. Um, and it shows like the, the first level all done, and then they got the castle at the end, where obviously that's the goal. Um, so you can try to make it look like that. However, just whatever you come up with. Um, but you, the game is good. At this point, you know how to do everything. You know how to put the blocks. You know how to put them on the right levels. Um, you know how to drop your guy to take a look to see if it, you know, if, if it's the right position, front or back. Um, so you should be good. So when you're all done with this, you need to save it, and then you need to send me or deposit in a zipped file. Uh, your game file. So if I grab this and I hit file, alright, this is my, which one is this? Save scene as. Oh, I don't want to do the scene. Uh, actually, hold on, I want to save the scene. And I want to save the project. Now I'm like, crap, which project did I open? Oh, so I'm going to uh, minimize this. I'm going to go to my 2D saves. And this was my copy, because that was the one that I did. So go to your project folder, so wherever your Unity is, wherever you installed it, go to your projects, Unity, projects, find the one that you just now worked on it, whether it was a copy or the actual one, and right click and add to archive, and make it a zip file. What? Oh, because it's open. Uh, you get the idea. And then you'll drop this zip file. So obviously make sure your Unity is closed when you do it, otherwise you can't zip everything because I've got still got stuff open in my game. Uh, but then drop me that zip file, and that's your project for this week. Uh, I'm actually going to give you guys some extra time, because next week uh, we're going to be doing um, some scripting. We're going to kind of get away from the book next week, and we're just going to talk about moving a player and making uh, some generic scripts uh, and how some stuff works in Unity. Um, so I'll give you guys till the end of next week to have this all done. So you need to have ten screens, and everything should look all nice and neat. If when I open up your thing, I should just see screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four, that kind of stuff. This cactus would be in screen two. You know, I don't want to see a whole bunch of gobbledygook out here on your regular screen. So I just want to see the 10 screens, all, all nice stuff. Um, I want to see some uh, neat ideas, boxes to hit, things to jump over, um, maybe multiple layers. You know, maybe you added some other stuff here at the top, and then he's got to jump over that. Maybe you added those to the water. You get the idea. So 10 screens, so you need 100 blocks. We already did the first 20. You only need to do the last 80. And you've got this week and next week. I'm going to put the folder in this week's. Uh, no, I'll put it next week's. Um, and that way we're sure. Uh, but you guys all know you've got, so now you've got two weeks. If you're doing this correctly, you're reading the book on the weekend, and then on Monday you're actually watching this video. Um, it leaves you, you know, almost two full weeks to get this done. So if you've got any questions, let me know. If you screw up like me, just <laughs> delete and start over. And other than that, um, give me an email if you've got a question. You guys all know my office hours. All right, guys. Talk to you later.